Hey everybody, we're going to continue looking at playing songs in any key, and I'm going to talk about doing chord melody arrangements, improvising them in such a way that you don't have to add any extra thinking to think in any other key. We're not going to transpose, we're not even going to worry about key center. If this is your first time checking out a Labyrinth of Limitations episode, I recommend going to what I did back in February, which is when I began the Foundations Project, and check out Foundations Zero and Foundations One for an introduction into how all of this works. Also, I have a full course on Patreon. I'd like you to know about that. It's a really wonderful thing. I'm publishing things every week there. There are PDFs and videos. Everything's organized in units, so you can do this in a step-by-step -step way that really guides your practice. We have Zoom classes on Sundays and a nice community there with the Discord, all kinds of fun stuff. And if you enjoy this sort of content, please give this video a like and a subscribe. All right, now let's get to playing chord melody arrangements. We're gonna have three steps and maybe a fourth one if we have time for a little something extra in order to do this. Step one, know your melody. Step two, know how the melody fits within a scale of chords that you're gonna be playing. Step three, have the ability to summon the appropriate chords underneath note, each note of the melody, given what you know from step one and step two. There's a step four that we could do that is using the transformation skills we practiced in the last video here, and we could apply that to do some extra stuff. Knowing the melody means we know the intervallic space between each note, so we need to know those distances. We're gonna play Embraceable You, we're looking at the melody. It starts here, it goes up a whole step, and then a half step, then it jumps down to minor third and it does it again. Then it goes up another whole step, and then it jumps down a fifth, like that. We need to be able to do that anywhere. We need to be able to jump down a fifth wherever we are. Here. See, what if we were here? We need to be able to do all of that wherever I am on the guitar, so. Anywhere I am on the guitar. That is step one. Step two is knowing how each one of those notes fit within our scales of chords. So we need to know what scales of chords we're playing. If we're playing in F major, we start with F major six. That means F major six diminished, the scale of chords. And then we have the flat three diminished. That's A flat, fully diminished seventh. And it has a scale of chords that is called the diminished scale. And I talked about that in a video that I will link to here with the flat three diminished and the diminished scale. And then we go to B flat major six. So we play the B flat major six diminished scale of chords. And then the fourth bar has C seven, but we're gonna play D flat minor six, which is a really pretty sound. And it gives us a wonderful opportunity to do borrowing in this melody and our chord melody arrangement, which is a fundamental skill. So we're gonna use the tritones minor. The tritones minor is something I talk about in more detail in Foundations 1, the PDF that I offer for my website. So if you don't know these concepts, you might want to get that and start reading through it. It's a big uh, document. It's kind of the textbook of all polyphonic work I teach here and on Patreon. So now that I know my scales of chords, I need to know that the first note of this melody, D, would be the six of F major six. So I look at my tune, I consider the melody note, I consider that it says F major, and I understand that that D is a six of F major six. And then it goes up to the major seventh in the scale, which is always harmonized as a standard move um, by the diminished chord. And then I go up to the root. So I have to know how to play chords that put the six, the major seventh, and the root up on top. And that's really important. And then, the second measure is quite easy because I just harmonize all of it with diminished shapes because it's a diminished scale. And then the third measure, the note that I get to when I go up that extra whole step, that is the six of a major six. So I could play the same voicing I used for the first measure. And then we have something tricky. I go down a fifth. I'm doing something kind of colorful. What I'm doing is I'm seeing this C natural note as the major seventh within the D flat minor six diminished scale. So I'm thinking D flat minor six and I go up to the major seventh and that's the note. Now I could harmonize that with the diminished 
but I don't want to do that here. I want to treat it as a borrowing. People like to put off borrowing, but it is a fundamental skill and we need to practice it right from the beginning. So what if, how would I do that? Here's the thing. I could see this D flat minor six and I need to find where either the six or the root is in the chord. So here's the root. So I could go down a half step and that would be, see, I would go, see if my melody in the key of F major were. So I'm just borrowing beneath the root of minor six. Or if I were up here going, well, I could think above the six of D flat minor six, I go up a whole step, which is a really pretty sound. What if I were here? This is D flat minor six with the fifth in the bass. The root is on the third string. I go down a half step. So I go like this. It's a really pretty sound. So I got to be able to do that flexibly. What if I went like this and then went to here? Well, I could think if I know this shape of a drop two, I know that the root is here. I go down a half step. That's borrowing. Really pretty sound. So we can continue. The whole song can be looked at in this way, but just these first four bars quite wonderful to explore like this. So what if my melody were here? Um, so I could go, I need to know how to play a six in the bass. So I go, just drop two down here. And then just simple drop twos, it's pretty. Or if you know some elevator stuff, that's the name I give. And that's the name I give for the system I developed for playing polyphony and improvising it. And then this has to be the six. It's really pretty stuff. So we can do that and we use a little transformation like I talked about in the last episode and we can bridge our way into the next measure. But um, uh, let me show you how to do that really quick. So we go, let's take this key. So here I am, I'm gonna go, this is gonna be the six. I'm gonna harmonize above it. And then I'm gonna go diminished. And then this is the six. Now here I am, I'm playing a minor six. I'm thinking this with the borrowing. I'm gonna go down a semitone. I'm gonna go backwards in the circle like I talked about in the last episode, and then I'm gonna go across up in major, like that. And that gets me to measure five. And that's all there is to that. Then I go. Which is really, really pretty stuff. I hope that this is inspiring to everybody. This is how you do it if you want to have to not think at all about transposing or about key center, and you just want to be able to play freely. And there's more and more we can add. This is just the beginning. We learn something I talk about on my Patreon uh, called Intertwining, where we are learning to connect our single note lines to this. And we're just making it so that we can use the guitar like this big generator of music, a big kind of algorithmic, guitar, um, like a little analog computer um, that can be really intelligent, but also very visceral and in real time. It's just a lot of fun. So thanks everybody for watching and have fun playing songs in any key with this method. Apply it to what you're looking at or play Embraceable Ute. And I'll talk to you soon. Happy practicing.